Hey you guys, my name is Cisco and today I'm gonna talk about five common mistakes that new airsofters make. But first, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about myself. So as I said before, my name is Cisco. I've been playing airsoft for about 11 years now. I've been working with Airsoft GI at the California Walk-In Store for about two years now. Uh, I have more guns than I do fingers on my hands. Um, favorite fields I like to go to, uh, Code Red, SC Village. Uh, now recently uh, named Wildlands Airsoft in uh, Lake Elsinore. Uh, you can also find me at TAC and the new field, Project N1. I have multiple play carriers and chest rigs, but I do have a go-to loadout that I'm gonna show you guys right now. All right, so this is my kit. Let's get into it. Starting off with my primary, this is my G&G &G GR15 Raider. Right now I have it built as a Mark 18. So what's really unique about my gun is I have different upper receivers that I can swap out with to fill whatever role that I need to on the field. Right now it's filled as a Mark 18, so I can go really indoor CQB style gameplay, but I do have longer upper receivers for outdoor gameplay where I need to have a little bit more range and accuracy. As of right now, internally, the gun has a Tinley 45K motor, a Airsoft GI Palm Piston and Piston Head. Internally, I had our tech department build this out for me. This gun has a Tinley 45K motor, 16 to one ratio gears, Palm Piston and Piston Head, Teflon coated cylinder, a Mad Bull 6.03 inner barrel that has been S-hopped, and a 120 spring. As of right now, the inner barrel length is 300 millimeters, and it's chronoing in about 350 to 360 FPS. Once I put a carbon link barrel into it, uh, being 363, it'll boost it up to about 390 to 400. All right, enough about my gun. Let's get into my tactical gear. Starting off with my hands, I run Mechanics 2012 Impact Gloves. These are very comfortable while still giving me very good protection, uh, so I don't have to worry about getting shot in the hands. For my plate carrier, I run a Condor MPS chest armor. Starting from my shoulders, I have the included shoulder straps that come with the plate carrier. Uh, integrated into the vest is a Condor Cobra uh, one point sling, uh, the double bungee version. Uh, this does have the quick detach buckle just in case I need to ditch my rifle really quick. I can easily uh, get it away from my body. Onto the top of the plate carrier, I have uh, a Condor uh, Molly admin pouch where I have pens, extra grenade pins. I have a pistol magazine pouch for my uh, sidearm and my uh, bow fang. Going into the bottom of the plate here, I have eight mid cap magazines. I do own quite the variety of magazines. Uh, currently there are PTS emags and uh, EPMs. I really like using grenades, so I have a couple of different grenades on me right now. In the main pouch, I run Thunderbee distraction grenades. These are really loud and really fun. Up front, I run a dual flashbang pouch, which holds my airsoft innervation cyclone grenades. On the left side of my vest, I do run a rubber knife just in case I get up close and personal. And up front right here is an REI bottle opener, just cause. I did forget to mention that I do carry my dead rag right here as well. Call your hits. On my back, I have a Condor hydration backpack. I use this to hold my hydration, obviously, and more ammo, grenades, magazines, whatever my teammates need that I can't reach when they're behind me. I also run a Kydex banger pouch on my back for teammates to grab an extra Thunderbee that I have back there. On my first line for my sidearm, I run an Elite Force 1911 TAC. I put a SOCOM gear uh, Punisher, I believe this is the Punisher uh, muzzle brake on there just for looks. Uh, the Elite Force 1911 I have been using for about four years now. It's held up very well. Um, parts are available for it. Uh, I have nothing but good things to say about it. Um, it has survived uh, the test of time. To hold it, I have a Blackhawk 1911 uh, holster. On my left side, I use an HSGI leg panel with three double-decker tacos. I did this instead of having the Casa Luda leg rig, so I have the option of running a third magazine. Right behind that is a Condor recovery pouch for when I need to reload magazines. Holding it all together is a Condor riggers belt. Moving down to my knees, I run Hatch x tac knee pads. For footwear, I always run steel toe boots. This is what you'll typically see me in on the field. Uh, I love this plate carrier because it's very modular. I can make this really lightweight and low profile so I can be very maneuverable and uh, very effective in CQB gameplay. Or I could add all these pouches onto it, um, put as much stuff as I need to go out for a very long mil sim game. Enough about me, let's get into the five common mistakes that airsofters make. Now that I formally introduced myself, I'm gonna give you guys the top five common mistakes that new players will make. Coming in at number five is not knowing the sound of a dry firing gun. There's a very subtle but distinct sound that the gun will make when it's not actually firing BBs. 
It's happened to countless people, including myself, where I'll take aim and start firing, but nothing but air comes out. What will normally happen is your animal will hear you and they'll shoot back. By knowing this sound, it'll let you know to change your magazine or wind your high cap. Moving on to number four is having the right tool for the right job. We were all there once when we're just getting started and we want to buy all of our tactical gear at once. As you saw earlier in the video, I run a lot of gear when I go out and play. But that's because I'm normally running two to three hour games. Depending on what gun you have and what role you're trying to play will depend on how much kit you actually need. There's no reason to go out with 80 pounds of kit if you're going to be going to play a 15 minute game. But on the other end of the spectrum, you want to make sure that you have all the right equipment that you'll need to get out and have a good day of play. There's nothing worse than getting out onto the field and realizing that you forgot to load your magazines or forgetting to charge your batteries the night before. Coming in at number three is sniper rifles for your first airsoft gun. We do get a lot of new players in the storefront asking for a sniper rifle as their first airsoft gun. But I'm sorry to say it, you probably should go with an AEG instead. Fact of the matter is a lot of us ended up in this hobby due to a lot of action movies. Most commonly, the sniper rifle. You'll see that actor a long distance away, taking one shot, one kill. And I can't lie, the motion of pulling a bolt back is really cool. But that bolt might actually be the problem for most players. In the storefront, I see an average of 10 to 13 year old players trying to get a sniper rifle for their first gun. Uh, I hate to crush their dreams, but I'll normally hand them one and ask them to try and pull the bolt back. Majority of affordable sniper rifles are spring powered, and that spring is really stiff. Now, considering that you are older and have no problem pulling the bolt back, I still have to warn you about the downsides of bolt action sniper rifles. Out of the box, you're going to get about the same range as an AEG. Considering that you're starting off, you're not going to want to put hundreds of dollars in upgrades to make it shoot 500 FPS and 300 feet. When you're on the field and fire at another player, by the time you pull the bolt back and get your sights on target, the other player probably would have shot 20 or so BBs at you. It requires a lot of patience to run a sniper rifle, and most fields have a 100 foot engagement distance. So, you're gonna be so far behind that you're not gonna see any action. So, if you were considering a sniper rifle as your first airsoft gun, please think about it. Make sure that's really what you wanna do. And at number two is situational awareness. Mastering this will take some time, but it will make you a better player in the end. When you're running around on the field and your adrenaline is high, you end up getting what's called tunnel vision. Basically, this makes players concentrate on what's directly in front of them. Now, this field of view will shrink even more once you start trading shots with your opponent. Now, while staying focused on your opponent is a good thing, it dulls your surroundings, making it harder to concentrate on what's going on around you. Because you're concentrating on your opponent, you may not see another opponent flanking from the left or the right side. Trying to be aware of what's going on around you will help prevent any surprise attacks. This concept works better with multiple teammates. You can have each teammate dedicated to one specific direction, that way you don't have to worry about the rest. And finally, for number one, don't get carried away with upgrades. Don't get us wrong, upgrading guns can be a blast and give you a better edge on the field, but doing your research does pay off beforehand. Oftentimes, people will buy a new gun and immediately start to deck it out with flashlights, optics, vertical grips, without even taking it out on the field first. After buying a brand new gun, we recommend going out into the field and playing so you know exactly what you need. You won't need a flashlight when you're playing in the middle of the day. Now, most accessories will make sense, like a vertical grip for stability, a red dot for better target acquisition, but sometimes it's just not necessary. Not just for accessories, but internal parts too. We have a lot of players that are recommended by friends to buy a gun and instantly do upgrades to it. By doing this, they don't even know if the gun is already working perfectly fine for them. So, spend some quality time with your airsoft gun and learn the ins and outs of it. Take notes on what you like and what you don't like. Show your technician and this way they can help you out with your first upgrades. As always, our storefront employees and techs are happy to answer any questions that you may have. So, feel free to drop us a line or come into the store and we'll help you out. Bonus tip, call your hits. It's an honor-based game, we're all out here to have fun. What If you don't call your hits, it ruins it for everyone else. All right guys, I hope our five tips gave you some food for thought. Maybe you guys even got a kick out of it. If you have any tips for new players, leave them in the comments below. Help our community grow. Uh, we're all friends out here, so we want to help the community grow bigger. Uh, my name is Cisco, and thank you guys for watching GITV.